Hello everyone and welcome back to the Belgium Beer Brothers channel. I am Cedric and today we are going to talk about our sixth beer in the Tour de Geurs uh, series and that will be the Moch Subit Oude Geurs, the old Geurs um, by brewery Moch Subit which is French for sudden death so let's see how this goes uh, but more about that name later on. Um, first I want to talk about the brewery for a little while and this is actually a brewery with quite a lot of history. Um, originally, the, the first mention of this, this brewery, back when it was a farm brewery, like we've heard many times before, was actually in 1604. Um, it was called brewery or farm, uh, the Geersmaker back then. It was in Kobbegem Asse, where it is still located. Um, and it was owned by the, the family, the Geersmaker. Uh, the very first mention of actually brewing there, of a brewer being over there, is in 1686. And we can see that on the label here, Anno 1686, uh, is still on there. Of course, according to literature, they started brewing in 1686. But generations later, in 1869, uh, Felix Jan de Keersmaker takes over. And even later, his son Hubert, Hubert de Keersmaker, who was uh, at the time already a mayor of Kobbegem, was also in the brewery uh, business. He um, developed uh, an ale, Hert Ale, or Hert, Hert Ale uh, it was called. And Hert is uh, Flemish for a deer, so deer ale actually. And he developed that beer after World War I. And somewhere around the 50s, um, another beer was added to that portfolio. And that was the, the Kop Pils. Kop, K-O-B, like in Kobbegem. So actually, they weren't really uh, Geuze stakers, blenders, or, or Geuze brewers by any means. Um, that came later on. because. Um, in the 50s, the uh, brewery was already owned by André and Paul, the Keersmaker, and Hubert wasn't the only politically um, affiliated family member because uh, Paul actually um, made it to state secretary for the federal government in Belgium. So they had their hand in, in a few political pots, let's say. But then in uh, 1970, the Keersmaker bought Brasserie Vossen uh, around Brussels somewhere. And Brasserie uh, Vossen was actually a pub owned by two brothers, the, the brothers Vossen, what was their last name. And the pub also had their own uh, Geuze blendery. And at the time, uh, it was tradition that many people came to eat their lunch at the pub and they talked about some things and they uh, played some games and one of those games is actually one of the games that I like to play and that's pitches back uh, play with three dice and we're not gonna go in depth about the rules right now but there was one rule implemented at the pub um, if the game was dragging on a bit and you had to make it back in time after lunch uh, they would play a round of sudden death, and sudden death meant that everyone playing uh, still had one roll, one die roll, and that determined the winner right here, right now. So that was called sudden death, or in French, in Brussels, so they spoke a lot of French, mort subit. And the game was played that often, that much, that the, uh, the pub actually got nicknamed à la mort subit. So at the sudden death, and Brasserie Vosse was uh, was above the door in tiny, tiny letters, and above that in in uh, lit letters there was à la mort subit, and I actually believe that the uh, the building still exists. I even think there's still a pub in there. Uh, so if you're ever in Brussels, go visit that. I'm actually planning on doing the same if I ever get the chance again. Um, anywho, so they took over the the pub 
and the, the blendry and they made it yeah their own but they they kept the name Morsebit and they named the beers Morsebit even um, up until this day so it's about 50 years ago they still have the name Morsebit they were really good businessmen the family de Keersmarker they were in politics but they were also very successful in business and in 1989 they also acquired uh, brewery Allenbos, uh, which wasn't that far from their own brewery um, only Allenbos already existed for 105 years um, but two years after the acquisition they stopped all forms of production and closed it down and only used the, the building for yeah stock basically it became a big warehouse now a lot of things happened with the Alan Boss building um, actually they left it in 2004 I think in 2012 uh, there was a um, yeah a paintball range uh, in there um, in 2012 they even had a deadly accident so the, the building got sealed and a few years later they got recognized as heritage and the parts of the site that weren't heritage were actually demolished and now there are uh, apartments and a commercial complex there um, so yeah actually there are still a few walls with the name Alan Boss on it but so they took over the, the Alan Boss brewery basically to close it down which was a, a bloody shame but and this is a, a side note here um, Erik de Keersmaker which, were, which is the son of Andre de Keersmaker one of the two owners back then um, he was uh, in management and he used to manage uh, he used to be a manager in Belgium for Walt Disney for example and in 2004 um, I mean from 2004 but until 2014 I believe and then uh, Walt Disney moved to France and they actually basically kicked out all their managers in Belgium because they didn't want too many managers in France and in 2018 Eric de Keersmaker uh, talked to one of his old study buddies and uh, yeah invited a brewer uh, Klaas van der Poorte and they decided to restart the Alan Boss beers they started a um, a crowdfunding basically and with over 300 crowdfunders they uh, they collected over a hundred thousand euros go check out their website they uh, they have an awesome warehouse currently they're not brewing themselves uh, they are brewing on location I believe at brewery de Ranke um, but they are dreaming of a new Alan Boss brewery an own brewery uh, Alan Boss 2.0 now somewhere before that time um, because actually the Keersmarker wasn't a brewer's family anymore in 2000 uh, Alken Maas acquired the brewery the Keersmarker with everything they owned so more subit as well and in 2008 I believe um, could be 2009 Alken Maas uh, got acquired by Hanneken the, the huge beer conglomerate um, nonetheless they left the brewery in its state that it was and they still have the same brewmaster um, I believe Bruno Reinders um, since the 1990s so not much has changed and talking about Bruno Reinders uh, the most beat Audigeus is actually his favorite beer as well now I must um, confess to you that I have never tasted the Morsubit Audigeus Lambic and I do know the Krieg Morsubit of course uh, I love Krieg but I was warned by some friends that the Audigeus Morsubit is a very sharp very sour Geus uh, not much sweet in there even less bitter very very sharp and very acidic um, 
Honestly, I don't really love my girls. Very acidic and very sour. So yeah, this is a this is gonna be a discovery for me as well. What I do know is that the Audi Gers uh, Marsubit has won a myriad of prizes. I believe they won uh, the best sour at the World Beer Awards uh, twice even, I think 2012 and 2014 or 2014 and 17. Um, but they have won some craft beer prizes, they have won some silver and gold medals on the Belgian festivals, on Spanish festivals, uh, on Italian festivals, anything you can imagine they've won quite a few prizes so yeah should be good right so all i can say now is uh let's dive right in let's not wait any longer and not having drank this um i am very 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 curious about it again here's in a in a classic champagne bottle, which actually dates back to the uh, 1800s when brewers um, not really had their own bottles, but mostly they uh, they went to fancy restaurants and asked if they could use their old champagne bottles. They soaked them and they cleaned them and then used them to uh, yeah, to bottle their, their gus with the uh, tiny hole on the bottom. Ooh. A big pop, nice wet cork, not a branded cork this time, it's a, it's a blank one. I see some damp here. It's very clear, not much bubbling going on. This is odd. Uh, in the nose I already get a slight sweet aroma next to the, the sharp sour aromas. Uh, there we go, carbonation comes out. It's less pale than I expected. It's a more orangey, amber-like color and a nice thick head of foam. Tiny, tiny bubbles. A lot of bubbles. The aroma is a bit thinner right now. Of course, it's a white glass, so. I did expect the beer to be a bit paler, but that, of course, only means that the, the wood of the casks really did its work and it has aged long enough a lot less foam now yeah let's have a taste okay i do get what the what they mean when they say it's a very uh, a truly sour acidic Gers, but I don't mind. It's not the uh, not the kind of sour that gets you muscle spasms, or not the kind of sour that I dislike. Um, on the contrary, actually, it's it's a uh, very citrusy, very yeah. The acidity is is more lemon less vinegar so that's rather pleasant rather fruity very well not fruity in a sweet way but very um 
like a young green apple yeah like the, the young very sour uh, juicy green apples and I even get a bit of a spicy hint in there can't figure out whether it's from the hops or the yeast probably the yeast and it has a very very pleasant mouthfeel uh, I don't know whether you guys can see this but these lovely lovely tiny pearls It's a very full-bodied goose and I think I was actually a bit uh, scared for nothing because it's I thought this was gonna be the the goose that I disliked most but actually I find it a very very pleasant goose um, it's not a gateway beer I do not recommend this um, as your first lambic or goose beer um, there are many others that are better suited for that uh, like the one we had yesterday but yeah if you're a bit into the goose beers or into the sour ales um, grab one of these they're they're very available not necessarily expensive and, and very pleasant very tasty very full-bodied Okay, my discovery of the day. I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, as usual, if you guys like this video, click on the thumb icon uh, down here. Um, if you wanna see the rest of the series or just the other videos that I make, subscribe, hit the bell icon, then you'll get notified when I uh, put some content online. And yeah, let me know what you guys think about it. If you have any recommendations or you tried this one, let me know what you think about it and see you in the next video. Cheers you guys.